you are welcome to my channel today i'll be addressing acute urinary retention a patient walks in and saying i can pee okay acute urinary retention is the common urological emergency but that's not common in women it's rare in them it's morning men the ratio of male to female is 13 to 1, and the trouble will increase with age. What are the causes of this kind of problem? If you go through my channel, already I've published a separate presentation on pre-renal causes of renal failure, renal causes of renal failure, and post-renal causes of renal failure. I've uh, I like in these post renal courses today because that will form the bulk of what we are going to discuss today. When it comes to the pathogenesis, here we'll be dealing with more than one mechanism. And it could be heart flow obstruction, neurogenic impairment, inefficient detrusal muscle, certain medications, infections, or trauma. Now, outflow obstruction. The patient comes in, says, I can't pee. Outflow obstruction is the commonest cause of urinary retention, particularly acute urinary retention. Here, we'll be dealing with narrowing of the urethra, or we are dealing with urethra muscle tone increase, or we're battling with benign prostatic hypertrophy or hyperplasia. It might be as a result of constipation. It might be as a result of prostatic carcinoma or bladder carcinoma. Still on outflow obstruction leading to urinary retention and patient is yelling, screaming, I can pee, can be as a result of retrostriture. Might be secondary to kidney stone, that is nephrolytosis. Femoses or parafemoses. In women, outflow obstruction will be caused by anatomical distortion. Remember, I've stated that the ratio of men to women will be 13 to 1, respectively. Even with the one in women, the probable causes in them will be sister seal, that is bladder sagging down to remember what that could be, you don't want to say. The same thing in rectal seal, that is the rectum you now prolapsing into the region. The same thing with uterine prolapse, it could also be as a result of benign or malignant you know, tumor in the pelvic region compressing the urethra or urethra diverticulum. It could be as a result of neurological impairment. Here, yeah, both sensory or motor impairment could be implicated. In dysnesia, there will be incomplete relaxation of the urinary sphincter. It could be as a result of spinal cord injury, secondary to trauma, infarct, demyelination, abscess, or metastasis to the spinal cord. Still on neurological impairment could be as a result of Guillain-Barre syndrome, diabetic neuropathy, stroke. In that case, there will be neurological deficit, there will be pain, and there will be acute or chronic urinary retention sometimes. Now, another factor could be inefficient detrusal muscle. And this will occur mostly in patients that are on anesthetic agent, either epidural anesthesia or general anesthesia. If that is the case, if these patients are placed on intravenous fluid, but might be out of omission or inadvertently it just happened like that that indwelling catheter is not in situ or is not in place then they will be forming urine because they are put you no know, pushing the fluid in 
the kidney is fitting properly right but it's not going to get out because the anesthesia is causing a realization of all the muscles that should be contracting right starting medications yeah the list is pretty long here in alpha agonists pseudoephedrine and ephedrine could lead to acute urinary retention among the beta agonists asoprotrinol beta protrinol or terbutalin could give us acute urinary retention the list of medication goes on to include antidepressant for example tricyclic antidepressant amitriptyline or tritriline you know, and so on they have anticholinergic effects they can retain you no know, run antiarrhythmic agents like quinidine procainamide and azopiramine could also lead to urinary retention like i've said the list of medications would be pretty long anticholinergics generally remember i've just alluded to tricyclic antidepressants you know having anticholinergic effects thereby having the capability to retain urine among other anticholinergics would be scopolamine you can check my channel here for full presentation on scopolamine like opyrolate or zibutinine flavosyl adochloride iosinine sulfate belladonna disclomine propantelin bromide omatropine methyl bromide i've told you earlier the list of medications will be pretty long anti-parkinsonian agents like attain that is try has a funny day could retain urine benstropine could lead to urinary retention level dopa could cause that also amount to them the medications will also include hormonal agents progesterone because progesterone they are meant to relaxe the smooth muscles why that they don't want the product of conception to be forced out then we call it miscarriage or spontaneous abortion so they do that excessively sometimes affecting even the renal system leading to realization when there should be contraction to push the urine out the same estrogen and testosterone will have urinary retention effect still on medications you you are tired right no don't be antipsychotics like hard door you are used to that mm -hmm. and all first generation antipsychotics could lead to urinary retention still on medications i've told you don't get tired with medications when it comes to urinary retention antihistamines particularly first generation antihistamines like benadryl diphenhydramine chlorpheniramine bromphenyramine cyproheptidine or idosizine could all lead to urinary retention still on medications is antihypertensives like hydralazine or nifedipine could lead to urinary retention medications will still include baclofen those are muscle relaxants right baclofen diazepam cyclobenzaprine when they are relaxing and relaxing smooth muscles then urinary retention is possible this will be the last page on the list of medications endometrin that is a non steroid anti inflammatory medication right carbamazepine you know that amphetamines dopamine vincristine all opioids and of course i've talked about anesthetic agents earlier all this will lead to acute urinary retention now another factor that could lead to acute urinary retention would be infections infections with inflammation can lead to obstruction and in this case prostatitis urethritis genital herpes varicella sussa and vulvovaginitis trauma 
could cause acute urinary retention, secondary to surgery, now any trauma to the pelvic region, urethral trauma, or trauma to the male organ. Okay, what are the clinical features? I can pee. The patient will yell. Abdominal pain, suprapubic discomfort. The patient will become restless and the mental state will become altered. There will be a flow incontinence if it is acute or chronic. When you check the urine, there might be maturity. Pain when they are pain, that is dysuria. With time, no bacteria will build up and then there will be infection and there will be fever. Rashes from that and of course neurological problems. How do you make the diagnosis of acute urinary retention? History. Jen has just now told me I can't pee. Mm -hmm. Full physical examination, but while palpating the bladder, don't you know, do it deep. Just have a light bladder palpation. Why that? That will lead to more discomfort. Don't get to the situation where the patient will have to hit you, hit your hand off the abdomen. We can grab the ultrasound and then we'll get some facts from that. So we can have um, catheterization done. Catheterization will do two things. It will be diagnostic and it could be therapeutic. If your ultrasound, I mean the ultrasound of the bladder is giving you volume greater than 300 mils, that is pointing to urinary retention. If you pass your catheter bladder non catheterization and you drain less than 200 mils, there is no urinary retention. Let me repeat. If ultrasonography of the bladder reveals urine in the bladder greater than 300 cc, then the diagnosis is right. Urinary retention is occurring here. If you don't have ultrasound and you just have bladder catheterization done and you can't drain more than 200, if it is less than 200 no cc and it's all done, nothing is coming out again, it is not urinary retention. Still on diagnosis, you can have digital rectal examination done to know whether we are dealing with um, prostatic enlargement or whether anything is happening to the rectum, whether any enlargement there or not. And of course, we do pelvic examination. Remember, any women, they want to know whether they're cystocele, rectocele, or prolars uterus, we want to see. And of course, neurological examination because we said neurological impairment could be responsible and we want to see whether there's paralysis or not the spinal cord injury or not and of course we'll add to the lab remember we just talked about infections so complete blood count will give us that picture and what has happened when this man or woman has not been able to peel any pro uh, problem with electrolytes urea and creatinine because of the retention and of course, we do analysis. We talked about the maturia just a while ago. Then we have urine MCLs, and we'll be able to know if there's, you know, a bacteria that is susceptible to a particular type of antibodies or not. Now, how do we treat? Mm -hmm. We have to treat the underlying cause after the acute intervention. Let me repeat. First thing first get the compression done with catheterization. There's no need to blow English here, no. The patient won't even listen, right? So the compression with catheterization first, then go after the underlying cause. When you get the urine you know, from bladder catheterization, you can use 
part of the samples for urinalysis and urine microscopy culture and sensitivity. Transuretral bladder catheterization is the best we could do quickly and get out quickly, but that will be contraindicated if there is history of recent urological surgery. Let me repeat. If patient comes to me with acute urinary retention, I can't pee. Just brief history, brief physical examination, grab the bladder you know, catheter, then insert the bladder if there is no contraindication. And one major contraindication here is recent urological surgery. You don't give it all. History of trauma to the perineum itself. You don't know whether the urethra is damaged itself. So if you are suspicious that that is the case, please don't pass transuretra bladder, bladder catheter. Don't. Okay, if you can't pass transuretra bladder catheter, then you go for suprapubic catheterization. And that will be helpful when transredder bladder catheterization is contraindicated. Also in prostatitis, in urethra stricture, in severe benign prostatic hyperplasia or hypertrophy, depending on what you are used to your jurisdiction, in some diseases or anatomical anomaly. See, Superpubic catheterization will be helpful in all situations where transuretral bladder catheterization is contraindicated. Many transuretral bladder catheterization will be the easiest, fastest, and get it done. But it's not done all the time. This, go through this list. When you have this, you don't. We go for suprapubic catheterization. You know, Medical practice is not rigid. The textbooks and literatures and all these presentations are just to guide us. You know, different doctors, different ways of helping the patient out. You might have just a needle decompression immediately, and then you have suprapubic aspiration done. But it is better to have a complete decompression done some practice partial drainage and clamping well it is better to have a complete drainage done okay what are the possible complications of decompression immaturia transcend hypotension post obstructive diuresis that is common with acute and chronic here if it is, then you can give 250 mils normal saline once the diuresis are set, because you don't want the patient to become dehydrated or have hypovolemic shock and then die. Stop the offending medications if the cause is secondary to medication. Still on treatment, you don't have to admit, but you must admit if there is urosepsis, if there is a of cancer and, and it's not been diagnosed and not on treatment, if you can pick acute myelopathy or acute renal failure, please admit, do more workup and refer appropriately. Lastly, on treatment, remember, catheterization is expected to be for short term. You may choose to use clean intermittent catheterization but long-term catheterization would be advisable if we are dealing with spinal cord injury, the patient is moribund, or we have guillain barre syndrome, or there is history of cancer, but the patient has not been operated upon, or the cancer is inoperable, meaning they cannot operate on such patients. So if that is the case, then, the catheter use will be for a long period. So with that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. Remember to share this very presentation. Remember to subscribe to my channel so that you can have all my presentations immediately they are published.
have a shame.